So here's what happened. I got that transmission for free and I just took it upon myself to trust that uh, the transmission I got for free was good without actually testing it because these transmissions are fairly reliable and I thought it couldn't possibly go wrong. But what actually happened was um, the tech who took it out of the car was right. Uh, it was bad, it wouldn't go in gear. Uh, I was really disappointed because I wanted to take the car to Colorado like the next day and that obviously didn't happen. Um, so what I'm doing now is I have both of the transmissions here on the ground and I'm doing what I should have done all along, which is pulling the LSD out of the new transmission that I wanted, splitting both the transmissions open, swapping the diffs, and then doing the whole job again and putting it back in my car. So here we go. And there we have both R53 transmissions split open. And you can see right here, the differences in the diffs. So this is the open diff that came out of my 04 transmission. If you look through there, it's a straight bar across. And if you look through this one, you see that flat piece in that middle bar. That is how you can tell the difference between a factory open and uh, limited slip differential in these cars. So this is the LSD. That's going in that transmission, which is my 04 with the longer gearing. And uh, that's gonna go back in the car. This one, there's not really anything on the surface to see that's gone wrong with it. So I'm gonna leave that for a later date. And for now, I'm just going to put back together the transmission that I'm using put it back in the car and get it running. Okay, so I set the LSD down in my transmission that's going back in the car, and I was noticing that it didn't quite line up with the teeth in this transmission very well. And then I remembered that these two transmissions actually have slightly different gearing, and I hadn't really looked into uh, enough research to know if that was an, uh, a difference in the, uh, the drive gears themselves or if it was the final drive on the LSD. And it turns out they actually do have a different number of teeth on them. So I have to swap the ring gears between the two LSDs in order to get them in order to get them to fit in the opposite transmissions um, because the final drives are different. So um, I think it's just a bunch of bolts and I have to hammer it off, but there may be some heat involved. So let's see. It's now the next day. What I'm planning to do right now is put some new seals in the transmission I'm putting back in the car. I'm gonna put a left and right output shaft seal, an input shaft seal, and a guide tube in it. Um, those are all really easy to do when the transmission's split apart because you don't have to drill and pull them out. You can just knock them out from the inside. Um, so I'm gonna do that, put it back together, get it up on the transmission stand, put it back in the car, and hopefully by the end of the day today, I will have this car running for the first time since three months ago.
All right, this transmission's all buttoned up. It's got all new input and output seals in it. It's got new bushings for the clutch fork. Um, the throw out bearing is the one that I had on it just a few months ago. This has six miles on it. It's fine. Um, what I'm going to do now is tell you about the other problem that happened when I did this job a few months ago. Um, you see, what happened was I got this uh, flywheel with a clutch kit from a good friend, Amir. You know him. And I got this uh, clutch and pressure plate with it as well. This is actually a Vallejo um, upgrade for the R53 and the springs are in the friction disc as opposed to the flywheel like they are in the R53 from the factory. This is a pretty traditional setup for most other cars. Um, this supposedly, well, it's cheaper. That's really why I went with it, but um, I've seen plenty of reviews of it on other cars and they seem to hold just enough power, so I didn't see any problem going with that. The problem was um, Amir did not give me any hardware. Uh, I don't think he had the hardware for this clutch kit, so I had to source it that day when I was installing it at Baron. And this is what I came up with, and it seemed to hold just fine. But what I discovered was, if you put this in and take note of where it bottoms out, the issue came when it actually ended up, I've, I've just discovered it bottomed out before it made the clutch and the pressure plate tight to the flywheel. And what that did was prevent me from getting full clamping force between the flywheel and the pressure plate. So the other issue I was having besides it not going in gear due to the transmission being broken was that uh, it, when I tried to accelerate at all, it would just slip the clutch and I couldn't figure out why. It wouldn't hold any power, but that's the reason why. So today, I have new hardware, which is gonna solve that problem. These bolts are just a few millimeters shorter and they don't have that naked shoulder on them. So they have threads all the way up to the head. And uh, I'm also gonna put some washers on there and that should solve my problem. So let's get this baby put on. I'm feeling more and more confident in this install by the second as I put this pressure plate on. Have a look at this. You can see with the pressure plate and clutch on the flywheel now, here's the new bolts I put in there, and here's the old bolt, and you can see that distance from the head to the head is different. And uh, when I had these bolts in there before, there was actually a gap right here between the pressure plate and the flywheel and uh, that's why it wasn't providing all the clamping force and that's why the clutch was slipping. So note to self, when you go into a big job that you're gonna need to uh, replace a lot of things for, make sure ahead of time that you have all the proper bolts from the manufacturer so you don't have to go source them yourself and get the wrong length. Pro tip and reasons for avoiding sleep deprivation while you work on your car. 
see this bracket here, how it has no writing on the back face of it, and see this bushing here that does have writing on the back face of it. That's because um, that one's in backwards. And uh, don't worry, I didn't do them differently together. I put them both in backwards last time, three months ago, and I didn't notice because uh, the only reason you would know is if you uh, notice that this purple circle here is bigger than this one. That's actually the front face of the bushing. That should be facing this way so that it's trapped and can't come out. Uh, this one I've just corrected and you can see it's facing the right way. So that's what I'm doing right now. Will it go in gear? Will it move? Let's see. Ready, steady. Yeah! It works! Ha. And just like that, my R53 is drivable again, and I am so glad to be driving it. Um, I've never driven a front-wheel drive car with an LSD in the snow before, and it's really magical. Uh, you can kind of just point the wheel in whatever direction you care to and give it more gas, and it just pulls itself that direction. I don't even have snow tires on it. I just have regular Pirelli All Seasons, and it does great. Um, really a lot of fun. Really glad to be driving that car again. Um, I've also verified that the transmission that I pulled out that I thought was good and then thought was bad is actually good and I verified that by means of installing it in another vehicle that currently runs and drives now with it in it. Um, I'll tell you about that later but uh, yeah basically what happened was the bolts that I showed you that were the wrong length were the cause of the clutch slipping and the car not going in gear. Uh, the transmission was actually good. So uh, chalk that up to a learning experience and uh, measuring twice and cutting once. Uh, yeah, everything's all good now. I'm really happy to be driving this car again. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll have another video for you next week. Please like the video if you appreciated it and leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see in the future and subscribe so you see everything that I put out. Ring that little bell that tells you when I put a new video out and I will see you next week. Bye.